Welcome back guys to another video don't forget to subscribe and let's started chapter 3 Naruto, a love for Milim chapter 3, Gaia Crimson, Velzidu, and the game there was a majestic palace on the ever frozen continent. The palace was known throughout the whole world as the palace of white ice, it was forever ruled by the oldest demon lord, one of the strongest to ever existed, the lord of darkness Guy Crimson. The man had taken appearance as the handsome man with feminine traits. He had crimson irides and cardinal red long hair. Despite he looked to be male, he was actually an androgynous demon, he could be a woman if he wanted to. Currently he was sitting on the highest floor of the palace enjoying a glass of tea, however, he was not alone. A beautiful woman with long white hair was sitting on a luxurious chair on his right side. She was the ice dragon Velzido, one of the remaining three of true dragons. Not too far from the two extraordinary beings, there was a woman clothed in maid uniform guarding the door. Her name was Hiri, she was Guy Crimson's strongest servant along with her seemed to be twin sister. She was the officer of the demon. Although she was strong, enough to annihilate an entire large city, to Guy Crimson she was weak and useless, hence she was not allowed to speak in his presence. Her and her sister job was only taking care of the demon lord, as his maids and officer. Until she could get stronger, it was highly unlikely she and her sister would be allowed to act on their own. What are you thinking? Velzidu suddenly asked, erasing the silence that was occupying the two. I doubt it has something to do with Rudra. It has nothing to do with Rudra, but perhaps it somehow has. Guy's response was vague, as though he was not certain about it. Is it related to the last war? Guy did not immediately respond to the question, he seemed to be pondering about it. It had been a hundred years since the last war against the angels. The war was not interesting at all, Guy did not even take part in that one. Though sadly, not that Guy felt any sadness or sympathy, the number of demon lord had been reduced greatly. Because of that, they had made an agreement to keep ten as the maximum number of demon lords, meaning there would be no eleventh demon lords ever since. However, as of now, the demon lord members were just consisted of six peoples, him, Milimnava, Ramaris, Dagrul, Dino, and Romanas. They would need four more people to make it ten. If there are things that made him happy with the war, it was the awakening of Dagrul as the true demon lord, sadly though he did not possess ultimate skill unlike him and Milim. There were chances for Romanas and Dino to awaken as true demon lords as well, they also seemed to possess the seeds of ultimate skill of seven deadly sins series. It would be interesting to see the day they awakened the skills. The most surprising about the war was the absence of Milim Nava. It was unlike Milim to not wreaking havoc in the war. As far as he knew, Milim would never let a chance of causing trouble to be wasted. However, on the last war, she really was not present at all. The rumor said. She only sent four of her servant cladded in golden armor to handle the angels. Each of those four had strength comparable to an awakened demon lord, perhaps beyond. Not only that, but also Milim seemingly had formed an empire. The empire was built about 300 years ago. Minava Empire was its name if he was not mistaken. Yes, Guy finally decided to answer Velzida's question. About Milim. To be precise, she is not acting the way she does, as though she is not Milim at all. Do you think, perhaps, Rudra has a hand with that? Highly unlikely, controlling Milim is almost impossible. The only thing I can think of is manipulation, though, knowing Milim, she was beyond the scale of that. Well, unless there's an ultimate skill that is mainly focusing on manipulating or brainwashing. But everything is possible, ultimate skill still is a mystery even for me. That's true, Velzidu nodded her head in understanding. Perhaps she had never witnessed the true strength of Milim Nava, but according to Guy, he needed Ramaris's help to calm the woman from her wrath. That spoke much of how strong the Dragonoid Demon Lord was. She envied the girl, to be acknowledged as Guy's equal was no. Small feat she's sure that she was not seen as his equal yet, partner yes but equal no. It seems I have to confirm it myself, I will visit Milim and her empire. Will you join me, Velzidu? Ah, yes, I also interested to know the truth. Besides, it has been so long since the last time I took a flight. With that being said, the two extraordinary beings floated up to the sky. Guy used his incredible speed leaving an annoyed Velzidu behind. Actually Velzido was not that slow or had trouble at flying to be left so far behind at all, it's just that Guy's speed was so fast. But of course her sister, Velgrind, was still faster than even Guy. Groaning, 
Velzada flapped her wings much faster than before. With her speed doubled, the true dragon pursued the Lord of Darkness in tremendous speed. However, Guy's speed still was much faster than hers. It would take a while before she reached the destination. Damned, why did not she wait there on the palace and asked Guy to open the gate for her later when he had arrived? Namaki City, the capital of Minava Empire about 300 years ago, Minava Empire was built. It took years to finish the buildings and cities but finally after. About five years everything was already in order. Ever since, more people came to look for shelters and more houses were built in response. Until today, the number of empire's people had reached 10 millions, almost 2 millions lived in the capital while the rest were divided among the 10 cities that encircling the capital. Among the 10 cities that surrounded the capital, one of them stood the most city of wonder or most known as Wonder City. The city was the nearest to the capital compared to the rest nine cities, the reason was simple, unlike the rest cities who were separated by plains or forest, the border between the capital and the wonder city was a quite big lake. Hence, to reach the capital through the city, one needed to board a boat or something alike. Although all the cities had the same building materials, the finest of all them still was the wonder city. Not only that, but also the biggest park of the empire was located inside the city. Hence it was favorited by many. Although it was the most popular one, its citizens were the smallest. Perhaps because its main purpose was not for industrial or business or entertainment, its main purpose was solely for relaxing. Despite the finest and popularity of the Wonder City, it was nowhere comparable to the capital of Minava Empire, Namaki City. For size alone, the capital could easily dwarf the rest cities. The ground was not paved with stone or normal iron unlike the rest ten cities, it was wholly paved with mithril. The buildings were all made of the finest materials. You could almost find everything you need in the capital. From the cheapest into the majestic hotel, from a simple shop to the finest restaurant, everything that existed in the rest cities could be found here in the capital with a better quality. If you walked into the capital through the main gate, you would be welcomed by the only road that was paved with silver. The road would directly bring you to the biggest building in the entire capital the Crimson Crystal Castle. No building stood between the castle and the main gate, however, the distance between them was about 25 kilometers, it would take a while to reach the castle's gate. Along the Silver Road, you would find many important buildings, shops, parks, and many else. Not only that, you would also find the second biggest building on the middle way on the right side of the road. It was a Colosseum-like building. It stood magnificently tall and wide, and now was crowded by people from all over the empire. The Colosseum-like building, which was named Game Hall, was mostly used as the place where the peak festival of Minava's day was held. And today was that special day for the people of the empire, the 300th festival of Minava's day, so of course so many peoples were enjoying the festival, not only in the capital but also in all cities. Not only the citizens, but the ministers and viceroys as well, they had to participate in this greatest day to make sure their empress and goddess, Milimsama, could enjoy the day and find the fun she's looking. Game Hall, VIP seats Milim happily stared at the ten finalists of the war champion who were standing down there inside the arena. Ever since Naruto made the game about 200 years ago, Milim had come to love the game. Even though the festival was not boring at all, the peak festival where the final game started was what she waiting the most. Not only the game world was nice, the fight itself was amusing to watch, more so with her being the final boss of the game. War Champion was the game. Naruto made with the help of a few other worlders. Although it was just a prototype of the real game which had yet to finish, it was enough to keep her life interesting. She had claimed her rank throughout years to finally defeat the old boss and became the new boss, it was hard and took time but at the end it felt fun. No one had defeated her yet. The one who was closer at defeating her was Haku. In the previous year, though, unfortunately, she was defeated by some human this time around. That human looked to be an otherworlder as well. Well, it was not a surprise at all. Most of the otherworlders excelled at this kind of thing after all. It was a virtual reality game. One did not need real power to participate in the game. The only thing that needed to be done was the registration process in early year and then they could hone their skills and level up until a day before the Minava's day by adventuring inside the virtual world created by Naruto's rune and the technologies developed by the otherworlders. 
and then every player who had reached level of 100 would be able to participate in the true stage of war. Champion, and only the last 10 standing would be able to play in the final where Milim was waiting. Those 10 finalists then would enter the sacred arena through 10 different gates. Through the gates they would be welcomed by the forest of the death before finally her old castle was waiting in the middle of the forest. It was up to the players whether they wanted to work together or eliminating each other, as long as they reached the castle then they would get the prize of the game. The smallest number of the player, the greater prize they would get, hence mostly they chose to eliminate each other. However, this year seemed to be different. A third of finalists seemed to be working together, if so then they would pose a threat to her last boss title. Well, she had just to make sure those 10 ended up fighting each other. Are you ready? Naruto, who was sitting beside her, asked. Isak will send them to the rune tube. If you are ready then you have to go to the rune tube as well. The audiences are so eager to see their empress and goddess in action, show them your power. Well, of course, I will never lose and I don't intend to let anyone become the last boss. It would be a pain to climb the rank again to reclaim the lost title. Is that so? Even so, I suggest you to fully equip yourself, those three other worlders are the gamer at heart. Milim nodded her head and arose from her seat. Well, I'm a gamer at soul. With that being said, Milim left the VIP seat accompanied by Haku who was always by her side. Since this time she did not make it to the final so there's no need to ask Conan to take over her job. Naruto could only smile at watching Milim who seemed to be waiting this time to come. Right after Milim's fully disappeared from the view, Naruto instructed Isak, an other worlder, to begin the final game. Just then the whole Colosseum was engulfed by darkness, the sunlight was blocked by a rooftop that appeared out of nowhere. The darkness lasts not long, though, as multiple screen appeared inside the arena fulfilling the dark arena with its light. There were 12 screens in total, each showing a different sight. One was showing Milim's place, 10 were showing each of 10 players, and another one was showing the sacred arena from wide angle. Milim Sama. Show them your awesomeness, Milim Sama. You fool. How dare you to raise your arms against. Milim Sama. Milim Sama. Show them hell. Milim Sama. Milim Sama. Milim Sama. As expected of Milim's follower, none of them who did not support her. Ah, that much was to be expected. It would be a surprise if there were people who did not cherish Milim. Well, even if that happened Naruto would not let it last long, he would make sure that everyone understood the first rule of being the people of the empire. Milim-sama, show your love for Naruto-sama. Ah, that one was not expected. He did not need to avert his eyes to know who had voiced out those embarrassing words. Naruto-sama, you have to support Milim-sama and show her your utmost love. Sighing, Naruto shifted his sight at the woman beside him, the woman was flashing her silly smile at him. But of course if you finally deem me worthy of accompanying you when Milimsama busy then I will not mind you show your love to me instead. Eskina, not that I'm not happy for accepting your big love but, we have been thrown Naruto did not continue his words as his eyes were widening in surprise. Someone with incredible speed and crazy strength was getting closer to the capital. He did not feel any malice intent from the figure but he had to stop the guy from penetrating the rune he had set up surrounding the capital. With that kind of strength, no doubt that the rune would not able to stop the person. Conan. Hi. I will leave everything to you, I will stop our uninvited guest. Understood, my lord. With that being said Naruto vanished from the view and reappeared right above the game hall's rooftop. Sprouting out his wings, a pair of dragon's wings similar to Milim's, he shot toward the direction of the powerful figure. While flying, Naruto did not forget to absorb the natural energy. Ever since he turned into half-dragonoid, his senjutsu was no longer similar to his toad senjutsu. His irides were no longer similar to that of a toad, but it were now had turned into red vertical like that of reptile. The amount of natural energy he could absorb also had tripled his usual senjutsu, perhaps it was the effect of being half-dragonoid. Though, despite everything, Milim was still beyond his reach. Even though he went all out, he would possibly lose against Milim's full power. That's not because he's weak. At his current self, he's sure that he could defeat Kagaya by himself. However, it was not enough to defeat Milim who had infinite amount of magic essence and stamina. Milim also had said that there was a person who could keep up with her power, though, he could not do it by himself alone. The last time when she lost control of her power, two demon lords had able to calm her down. 
One of them was Ramaris and another was the one who had the strength comparable to Milim, Guy Crimson. And judging by the magic essence he could feel, the person who was heading toward the capital was certainly that person, the Lord of Darkness, Guy Crimson. And it took no longer than two minutes for Guy Crimson to reach Milim's empire. Though, he did not expecting someone would welcome him before he could land a foot inside the supposed to be capital of the empire. Despite feeling a bit surprised, Guy stopped himself from his track and floating in the air. It is an honor to be visited by one of the strongest demon lord, the Lord of Darkness Guy Crimson. Though, at the moment Milim can't be bothered with. You have to wait for her if you want to meet her. Guy studied the blonde man carefully. With his ultimate skill, reading people was not that hard. The guy who had stopped him from reaching. His target was strong. His current energy was comparable to Dagrol, perhaps a bit more than the Demon Lord. However, Guy could also see some hidden power from the man. Perhaps it was similar to Milim's mana breeder reactor, but unlike Milim who could produce infinite amount of mana, the blonde's mana was finite. Not only that but also he had an ultimate skill, War Goddess Athena. He did not know the skill's ability, but if he forced the guy to use it then he could make the skill as his as well. With his ultimate skill Abyss God Nodens, the evolution of his ultimate skill Prideful King Satan, he could copy any skill after properly being analyzed and made it his own with 90% of its true potential. What is your name? Guy finally asked the man after done studying him. Ah, to think that. You can read me that easy. I assume you have known my ultimate skill and my real strength, huh? By the way, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, I'm Milim's friend, you can address me as Naruto. I see. It seems you are a very good friend of Milim, she has even turned you into half-dragonoid. I don't know how she did that but perhaps it is due to her energy or blood runs in you. And Naruto, you are studying me as well, no? Ah, you can address me as Guy as well. Ah yes, I'm also studying you, Guy. Though the only thing I can read is your real strength and your intention. I've no skill that allows me to read your skill. Ah, that is unfortunate, my skill allows me exactly that. Anyway, since you say Milim is busy, care to entertain me? Of course you have to use your full strength, if not, then you will accidentally being killed. I think so as well, I will die if I don't go all out. The temperature around Naruto suddenly changed. Wind started to pick up as yellow cloak with black markings started to cover Naruto's body. Six black balls made of condensed energy appeared behind his back and his energy had doubled his previous energy. Now this was what Guy was looking for so long, a worthy opponent to fight. Ever since his last fight against Rudra and Milim, he had felt the lack of challenge. But fortunately, his long war game with Rudra had healed him from his boredom. And now, another person with comparable strength had appeared. A happy smile blooming on Guy's lips, soon it changed into a full laughter. Interesting, it has been so long since I fight someone capable. Said Guy after his laughter died, Dark Aura started to engulf his body. It will be troublesome if we fight here, I hope you don't mind if we fight inside my special dimension. I don't mind. And Naruto was glad that Guy agreed not to fight here. And so he opened the portal for both himself and Guy, and now they were already inside the imitation of Shinobi world, the desert of Sunagakur to be precise. This dimension was actually supposed to be the artificial world for the game he and the other worlder created for Milim. With the combination of the technologies and his rune, creating a perfect game world was possible. But for now, the system had yet to finish and so this dimension was not working yet, hence it was okay to use it for fighting purpose. Is this really your dimension? The wind, the sky, the desert. It feels so real to be an artificial dimension. Actually, this dimension is located inside the special room in our residence. We are, no, I am dedicating this for Milim. I will explain later when we done fighting, by then I'm sure Milim is also done with her game. I see, so now I understand why Milim did not join the last war, she must have been enjoying the game too much to care for anything else. It seems so. Right after Naruto said those words, Guy had vanished from his place and appeared in instant before Naruto with a raising punch that aiming for his gut. The speed was incredibly fast, however, Naruto could follow him and thus he able to dodge the punch with his left arm. However, Guy had expected the blonde to dodge his punch, hence his punch had been opened with his palm directed at his arm. Napalm burst. Infernal flame burst out of Guy's palm and hit Naruto directly on his arm, it sent Naruto flying backward a dozen meters behind. 
Naruto managed to withstand the force behind the attack and brushed it aside. The attack was strong, but perhaps Guy did not use his full strength. Stretching out both his hands, two raisin shuriken appeared on both his palms, and so Naruto threw it away aiming to hit Guy with his favorite attack. He had perfected his raisin shuriken, it now would pursue the intended target. Though, as expected, Guy managed to avoid being hit by simply making the raisin shuriken hitting each other. The clash of two, raisin shuriken caused the ground to explode and the wind to go wild. Though, it did nothing to stop the two from continuing their fight. Later on, the game hall Velzado was not happy at all. She had been looking for Guy since an hour ago and yet there's not a single trace of his whereabouts, as though his existence had fully vanished from the world. And so she had ended up watching this so-called game by sitting in the VIP seat courtesy by the blue-haired demon. But unfortunately, the game had ended about five minutes ago, and now she had nothing to do other than watching those people celebrated the another win of their goddess Milimsama. How boring she ended up muttering. Milimsama will come soon, I'm sure she knows where master and your partner are. Velzida shifted her eyes toward the blue-haired demon who had welcomed her with a good respect. The woman whose name Conan was probably stronger than Guy's maid, more so with the high level of armor she's wearing. Is that so? That at least is good news. It was about a minute later that Milim returned to the VIP seat with a beaming smile on her face. Though, the smile lasted for a few seconds before she realized that Naruto was nowhere to be seen. Where's Naruto? She demanded Conan for answer. I don't believe that he did not watch me fighting she continued in disbelieving tone. It's not like that, Milim-sama, Conan fast at answering Milim's question. Your acquaintance, Demon Lord Guy Crimson, is visiting you. To prevent him from causing panic to the people, Master has decided on welcoming him by himself. So he preferred welcoming Guy over watching me. I it's not like that, Milim-sama. I'm sure not a single person in the whole empire who doesn't know that Master prefers you over everything is exists. Doesn't that everything he has done is purposely to make you happy? I'm sure Master has his own reason. Aya if you say it like that of course Milim would never fault Naruto. Naruto always did something that was good for her. She dared to believe that Naruto did not care toward anyone other than her, though, she's afraid of knowing the truth. It was unlike her, but when it came to Naruto, just by thinking him alone was enough to make her heart beat faster, it was not good for her health, not that she would get sick or what. So you are Milim Nava, now I understand why Guy sees you in high regard, your presence alone are already overwhelming. Who are you? Milim had just realized about the woman's presence. It seemed she was so eager to meet Naruto that made her to ignore everyone. I'm the second true dragon, Velzido. I'm Feldenava's sister, so technically, I'm your aunt. Milim honestly did not know about that. She did not know if she had any left family, ever. Since she could understand things, she was being taken care of by her maid. No family whatsoever. Her mother died, her father died. No one of her parents' family had bothered to look after her. And now this supposed true dragon had just claimed she was her aunt? How was she supposed to respond? I don't know about your existence, ever since our brother prohibited us from mating with human, we don't bother ourselves with such thing. I have just realized about this fact by studying you, you give of the aura similar to my brother. I don't know what to do with this knowledge now, but hopefully we can get along. You are, uh, okay. Velzido could not help herself from smiling, her niece was definitely stronger than her. She wondered why Guy had yet to launch attack toward Rudra. Surely he knew that by having Milim on his side he would certainly win this long war. Oh, perhaps there's a chance that Milim did not want to participate in his game so it was better to add more strong pawn on his side. So, do you know where your friend and Guy, she ended up asking. Knowing Guy, he would no doubt challenge Naruto to a fight. Perhaps they are inside that dimension. Is this Naruto that strong? To be able to attract Guy's attention. Of course Naruto is strong. Milim fast at responding. If I and Naruto together, we are unbeatable. Milim declared with a proud smile. More so when he becomes my cloth, I will be able to do almost anything. Aya is that so? Anyway, can we go meet them? Hmm. Milim seemed to think about whether to bring this woman into their residence or not. But. Again. She was her supposed to be aunt, so it was okay, right? Besides, Naruto had brought Guy inside that dimension so it was okay to bring this dragon along. In the end, Milim nodded her head and instructed Velzido to follow her. Milim created a portal and jumped into it. 
Haku, who was always by her side, followed her afterward, with Velzado following behind Haku. The three then disappeared from the view as the portal started to close itself. Milim's residence, Crimson Crystal Castle's underground floor about ten people were busy working on something that was similar to a very big computer. Its monitor was as large as the room's wall it hung upon. There were no wire around it but there were so many runes around the monitor and the machine. The rune seemingly made the monitor and machine connected to the sealed room near them. It was a small room inside this special research room. Not too far from those ten people, a portal was slowly opening, from within it three figure walked out. Two of them wearing gold cloths while another one was wearing a blue kimono-like cloth. Upon seeing those three arrival, Maximilian, who was the leader of those ten people, reacting fast by kneeling. Before the shortest woman out of three, soon his team members were following his lead by kneeling before her, their majesty empress and goddess. Max, is Naruto inside? Yes, your majesty, Naruto-sama and someone else are currently inside the dimension. You wish to enter as well? Yes, open the gate. Understood. Right after saying that, the researchers did their order done. A golden gate, crafted by numerous complex runes, appeared on the empty wall of the small room. Inside the dimension the wind country had been erased from this artificial world. There were not a single sand could be found, it had turned into a wasteland as magma was starting to erupt from the very ground that was cut in half. However, high up on the air, the fight was still continuing on as two beings were attacking each other with sword in each grips. Lightning had long started bombarding the destroyed land, causing more explosions when it struck the magma. Though, that did not deter these two beings from fighting. Guy swung his demon sword fully intending on cutting the blonde head, however, as always, his sword met the blonde's black sword on its midway. He tried another, it was being parried as well. Swung after swung he delivered and it all were being parried. This kind of sword fighting had been continuing on since he started to summon his sword 30 minutes ago, and the blonde in response to his sword creating his own sword by combining those six black balls. Ever since, they had been fighting with swords until now. If there's one thing that managed to annoy Guy Crimson was that the blonde refused to use his ultimate skill, hence he did not use his as well. Despite that, the blonde was so good. Though, he's sure that in the end he would certainly win, with or without using ultimate skill. Too focused on the blonde guy failed to notice that someone was aiming for his head and in return, he was being thrown far away toward a small mountain on another side of the country. The Strength behind the punch had even managed to destroy the mountain and went further beyond that until finally Guy managed to hold himself with his own power. TCH, Milim. Guy murmured and shot toward his previous place. Upon arriving, he was welcomed by four people, one of them was Velzado, and she did not seem to be happy. Yap, she did not happy at all. So while I'm looking for you for hours, you are here and enjoying yourself. Well, I have to say I forget about that, my apologies. Seeing Naruto's power makes me want to fight him, and thus we are here. Guy calmly answered and let his sword disappear. So, you really forgot about me? Ah, it's not that I forgot about you, I just thought that the fight will not last long but I underestimated Naruto too much it seems. Regardless, you did forget about me. Well, of that I apologize. Naruto decided to interfere, since Milim has finished playing games, let us leave this place to a more proper place. Right after saying that, the four people disappeared from the artificial world and reappeared at the guest room in Milim's residence. Naruto sat on the high-quality sofa alongside Milim and instructed both their guests to sit on the opposite side of them. Haku had excused herself to prepare tea and food as soon as they took seats, and she did not take long to return with four glasses of tea and two plate of dango. It has been a while Milim, you are as strong as ever. Though, that hit was not as hard as back then. Guy started as he took sip of the tea. Oh, I did not serious at all. I know. Anyway, the reason I'm here is to check on you and to find the answer as to why you did not participate in the last war. But it now is unnecessary, I have known the answer. By the way, what is this? Asked Guy as he tasted the dango. It is dango, what about it? Answered Naruto. You don't mind if my maids learn this as well? No. Of course, Marin or Shni can teach them. That's good. Guy said and motioned his hand to open the portal, two beautiful maids walked out of it soon after. Naruto motioned Haku to escort them to Marin or Shni. That's very kind of you, Velzido muttered after tasting the dango. 
We are quite bored without anything good to eat. Is that so? Yes. So, about the game. Guy asked again after eating his third dango. What about it? Milim fast at answering, preventing Naruto from responding. I will not. Telling you anything, that game is created especially for me. About 400 years later level up. Status name, Milim Nava Clan, Terumi Village, Kurigakur no Sato Rank, Chuyunin HP, 5500 CP, 2450 level, 33 Milim smiled happily when she checked on her stats. This was her third attempt on playing this virtual game. Her first try ended up in failure, she died in Chuyunin exam. Her second attempt was also the same. So passing the exam and became Chuyunin had make her more happy than usual, she needed seven more level to be able to join the Jounin exam. With that thought Milim continued her journey toward the client's village, she had to finish this mission to get a special sword of lightning. However, before Milim could reach the village, she was forcefully being logged out. And, when she opened her eyes, her underground room was what welcoming her sight, she was no longer in the game world. You have played the game for three days non-stop, Milim. Did not I tell you that you can only allocate two days time a week to play game? Milim widened her eyes when she heard those words. She slowly stood up from her rune tube and groggily looking at her favorite blonde who was staring at her with his sky blue eyes, seeming to waiting for her response. Aya, Naruto, I thought you will not return until tomorrow, she purposely asked with a cute smile on her lips, pretending to be innocent. Naruto could only sigh in defeated tone at hearing those words, who said that? I said that. Right, Naruto half-heartedly said. Come on, you have to stay at your throne at least. Until noon. After that you can play your game to your heart content. But I do think playing alone is not fun at all, care to reconsider making it public? We can change the war champion with the shinobi. Milim nodded her head and walked beside Naruto. I will not make it public. Because. Because the game is made especially for me, right? I see, I'm sorry for saying such nonsense, Milim. It's. Okay, I know Naruto was thinking about me when saying that. Oh, I know. How about you play with me instead? It would be nice. If I do that, who will take care of the empire? How about this, I will be a proper empress and in return you have to play with me, how? Naruto stoked his move when Milim proposed that idea. He intently stared at her blue eyes, are you sure about that? I thought you. Dislike playing empress. Milim let an embarrassed smile appeared on her lips, she looked elsewhere avoiding looking at Naruto. I if that will make you agree to play with me then I'm okay with it. I see, Naruto could not help but smile, if you can prove that you can become a good empress then I will accompany you, not only that but I will do everything you ask me to. Are you sure? Yes. I then will be the best empress the world has never seen before. After a while, the two finally arrived to the throne room. Haku welcomed the two and guided them to the throne. Milim gracefully sat on the throne, as usual, Naruto and Haku stood by her right and left side. Not too long after, Marin had found her way kneeling before the three. Milim-sama, someone named Jelmud is asking. Permission to meet you, your majesty. He said something about legendary artifact or something alike, shall we grant him permission to meet you? H.O. did he say something about the disappearance of Feldera? No, Naruto-sama. Though, he did mention about the meeting with the other demon lords. Ask him to tell you everything in detail and then force him to leave my empire. I don't like anyone setting foot in my land. Understood. Marin said in monotone voice and excused herself to fulfill her order. I thought that you would grant him permission to see you, Naruto said in wonder, though he seemed to be happy with Milim's response. I'm the empress, and I have to show people my dignity, no? Letting just anyone to stand before me will not be good for my image. Besides, did not I look cool at the moment earlier? Naruto blinked in surprise, at. Welcome back guys to another video don't forget to subscribe and let's started chapter 3 Naruto, a love for Milim chapter 3, Gaia Crimson, Velzidu, and the game there was a majestic palace on the ever frozen continent. The palace was known throughout the whole world as the palace of white ice. It was forever ruled by the oldest demon lord, one of the strongest to ever existed, the lord of darkness Guy Crimson. The man had taken appearance as the handsome man with feminine traits. He had crimson irides and cardinal red long hair. Despite he looked to be male, he was actually an androgynous demon, he could be a woman if he wanted to. Currently he was sitting on the highest floor of the palace enjoying a glass of tea, however, 
he was not alone. A beautiful woman with long white hair was sitting on a luxurious chair on his right side. She was the ice dragon Velzido, one of the remaining three of true dragons. Not too far from the two extraordinary beings, there was a woman clothed in maid uniform guarding the door. Her name was Hiri. She was Guy Crimson's strongest servant along with her seemed to be twin sister. She was the officer of the demon. Although she was strong, enough to annihilate an entire large city, to Guy Crimson she was weak and useless, hence she was not allowed to speak in his presence. Her and her sister job was only taking care of the demon lord, as his maids and officer. Until she could get stronger, it was highly unlikely she and her sister would be allowed to act on their own. What are you thinking? Velzido suddenly asked erasing the silence that was occupying the two. I doubt it has something to do with Rudra. It has nothing to do with Rudra, but perhaps it somehow has. Guy's response was vague, as though he was not certain about it. Is it related to the last war? Guy did not immediately respond to the question, he seemed to be pondering about it. It had been a hundred years since the last war against the angels. The war was not interesting at all, Guy did not even take part in that one. Though sadly, not that Guy felt any sadness or sympathy, the number of demon lord had been reduced greatly. Because of that, they had made an agreement to keep ten as the maximum number of demon lords, meaning there would be no eleventh demon lords ever since. However, as of now, the demon lord members were just consisted of six peoples, him, Milimnava, Ramaris, Dagrul, Dino, and Romanas. They would need four more people to make it ten. If there are things that made him happy with the war, it was the awakening of Dagrul as the true demon lord, sadly though he did not possess ultimate skill unlike him and Milim. There were chances for Romanas and Dino to awaken as true demon lords as well, they also seemed to possess the seeds of ultimate skill of seven deadly sin series. It would be interesting to see the day they awakened the skills. The most surprising about the war was the absence of Milim Nava. It was unlike Milim to not wreaking havoc in the war. As far as he knew, Milim would never let a chance of causing trouble to be wasted. However, on the last war, she really was not present at all. The rumor said. She only sent four of her servant cladded in golden armor to handle the angels. Each of those four had strength comparable to an awakened demon lord, perhaps beyond. Not only that, but also Milim seemingly had formed an empire. The empire was built about 300 years ago. Minava Empire was its name if he was not mistaken. Yes. Guy finally decided to answer Velzida's question about Milim. To be precise, she is not acting the way she does, as though she is not Milim at all. Do you think, perhaps, Rudra has a hand with that? Highly unlikely, controlling Milim is almost impossible. The only thing I can think of is manipulation, though, knowing Milim, she was beyond the scale of that. Well, unless there's an ultimate skill that is mainly focusing on manipulating or brainwashing. But everything is possible ultimate skill still is a mystery even for me. That's true, Velzido nodded her head in understanding. Perhaps she had never witnessed the true strength of Milim Nava, but according to Guy, he needed Ramaris's help to calm the